The movie straddles some real dark, action-filled moments with some real comedy. What was the funniest thing that happened on set that we didn't see in the movie? I think the accents. Should we like give him a bit of... <laughs> You know I'm trying I mean? to think of something specific that had us weak. I'll take a little sample of the accents if you. Yeah, no, it's not bad. Like, you're gonna talk about Superfly. It's, it's a great film with like great people. About this. The <laughs> cast and like, you know, being able to be on set and like, it was such a huge impact for our culture as a people. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. We're just trying to give like the youth just a chance. You know what I mean? To be able to dream big in that and just mm -hmm. go to the movies yeah, with yeah, a friend. Yeah, thing, you know yeah. yeah. Like, it's like not it. difficult if you put your mind to it. You know what I mean? Trevor Jackson in real life on set that's not in the movie it's he's amazing he's so funny so much energy um i think if people were to meet him in real life you'd notice how different he was from priest but it was just it was fun to have that relief in between takes you know what i mean where we were handling some pretty serious business during during the film um and then the minute they yell cut it's back to fun and games with trevor jackson <laughs> so it was, he's great the boys were telling me they did a lot of accents on set yes we all three of us we would go into the british accent out of nowhere it's crazy it's probably funny for you to hear you know the americans trying to have an accent but um yeah we would do that in, in between takes can i have a sample of yours i got a sample of that yeah can you turn it on yeah we're here today with ibtv uk i'm so excited to be sitting on this grand couch with you talking all things superfly Trevor, you had quite a big threesome scene in this movie. Yeah. How was that to film? It was very difficult, you know? It's hard <laughs> being rubbed on by two women at one time. In the water's cold. In the water's cold. <laughs> uh, no, it was amazing. I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop the action now. <laughs> I got stuck, so yeah, I got stuck. Um, no, yeah, it was very fun, man. It was, uh, it was okay. Yeah, we, we was living it up. <laughs> Definitely living it up. I'm trying not to go too much into detail about my feelings about it. It was fun and cold. The water was cold in that scene. This be, it's, it's nothing sexy about actually filming love scenes. And I think that's the huge mystery. Everyone thinks like, was it hot? No, it was not. <laughs> it was not. We're trying to, you know, stick to the choreography because we're trying to keep body parts covered. So, you know, throughout the, throughout the scene, you know, you'll hear X yelling, cover, cover her underwear. I was completely, I actually had on underwear and, and, a brawl situation during that, but you can't tell. We wanted to make sure that it, the story was still able to be told, but not feeling like we had to compromise any beliefs or show anything we didn't want to show. And we got the job done. I think when you watch it, it, it's pretty hot. It definitely looks way more sexy than I remember it being on that day. <laughs> it almost looks like a music video. Like yes. it's incredible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The way they edited it was gorgeous, and I love the music that they had on it. The record by her and. Khalid, actually, it was a really cool song. I feel like in the movie there was a real turning point from when the women were like the girlfriends and the side chicks to becoming the actual heroes of the whole movie. What did it feel like to be that one firing that shot which essentially saved the day? That was a great day. That was a great moment. And finally, I felt like she's arrived. You know what I mean? There was She served a great purpose throughout the film, but you didn't see her doing any of the combat or the action up until that point. And like you said, she that shot does save the day. It, it really does. And you would think that it would end with Priest essentially doing the, the action, but to have her you know, and is equal as priest in terms of getting the job done and, and, you know, being the hero, essentially. She's a female hero at the end of this movie, and so it was a huge honor to be in that position. There's some amazing outfits in this movie. Yes. What were your favorite things to wear? I think the Balenciaga boots. I walked with such stoicness, I feel. Yeah. When I put them on, the way they hit the asphalt <laughs> just made me feel like, wow. I mean, it was like a tick, tick, tick. I was like a stallion walking around. Right. Felt really good. And me personally, I'm, <laughs> I'm addicted to shoes myself. <laughs> I don't know, I think I liked the all white outfit that I had on. It was dope. But however, you know, <laughs> that's not either here, here or there. Like, I'm not turning my back on a man. Let's really just to wear a white get up. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna do it. But oh, yeah, it was it was a flat fit. Like the, the, the jacket that I had on and all that was like the gator joint. It was it was nice. What was it about the original movie that made you want to get involved with the remake? I mean the original's a classic man. It really had a lasting effect on the culture. I had not seen the movie. I, but I knew the movie was about a drug dealer who wanted to make a million dollars and leave the game. And that's a lot to know about a movie that was made before you're born and that you've never seen. 
So that, and I don't know where, it's not like someone told me that. I don't know where that information even came from. It's just kind of present in the culture. And they came to me and they said they wanted to do something. I said, all right, let's 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 put this together, but let's make this the way I would want to make a remake. Let's make this firmly based and from the original film. And then the changes we make and the, the things we evolve, evolve nat naturally from the story. Running through it, it almost feels like there's many kind of music videos in there. Mm -hmm. There were certain scenes that's very much how I felt. How did you kind of translate all your incredible music video work into the movie? I wanted everything to be super fly. That was the philosophy for every department. So you, you notice the props are a little extra. The locations are a little, everything was made to be bigger than normal. So that, uh, that finds its way into the camera. You know, the lighting, the camera moves, everything about this thing, we really wanted to make it super fly. It just had to be a little extra turned up. With the soundtrack, which is also incredible, um, how was that sort of collaborative process with Future? I felt the original with Curtis Mayfield, that he brought this vision to the music, a singular vision. And I felt that we needed someone that would do that today, bring a singular vision to the music. And Future became that guy. And um, just, you know, being in the studio with him, you know, he'd have the movie playing, he'd have the script out, he'd have, like, he really did the work to, to build this thing. The biggest moments in the movie, when uh, that scene with Rick Ross, when they start arguing, the argument isn't scripted. Uh, Jacob, when he says, we don't need these mother he just did it. And it just, the whole place, lit. like, everyone kept going with the scene. They started arguing, yelling, and we said, let's go with that. I loved it. And the scene is really changed and became a much, 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 much better scene from that. And that led us to the joke, uh, I really wanted to see them roll in their good clothes. That was because we had to now address the argument. Like, what the hell's wrong with our friend? Why did he do that? Like, all these elements grew out of that one ad lib and really made a great moment.